There we go. Not so dark now. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today I'm going to talk about brakes, that's it. Uh, so I've replaced the SV um, mass cylinder, pumped the brakes up, um, so basically all that's done with no copper grease in sight. And uh, some people are wittering on about using vacuum pumps and all the rest of it, I don't know why it's so fucking lazy, it didn't take that long. Um, yes, there's loads of ways, and this, that and the other. Pumping the brakes can help... Um, and Isaac will testament the first time I did it, I did that. The thing is with pumping the brakes is usually that's when you flush the system with uh, new fluid. When you pump, 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 all it's doing is compressing air going backwards and forwards if you have that nipple closed. Anyway, we'll get up, we'll get past that. This video has nothing to do with that. This video is to do with braking procedures for brakes because there actually is a braking procedure for brakes. Now, if you go to EBC and all this, they'll tell you. Um, but I thought I'd give you a little demo as well at the same time. And then I thought I'd go just that little bit extra. So, to quickly outline what they say is they say between 200 and 300 miles of just mediocre braking building up. Um, and this is to introduce heat into the system. This is also to make sure that the brake pads are square. And every, like I said, everything needs to shift a bit because these are floating calipers on the rear in this particular case. But it's the same with any kind of brake system. Um, you've in a sense got to bed them in and basically mate them together, in a sense. Um, for example, here's a picture I found of uh, ill-fitting brakes. Now, I don't know, I wasn't here, this isn't my picture. I don't know if this brake disc was probably, probably the brake disc is warped to fuck. But, if the pads go in crooked, then they can actually over time cause the brake pads to... Um, they can actually cause the uh, brake rotor to warp itself anyway. If you just keep on leaning on it from the top and not at the centre or the bottom of where the contact patch is, you are going to dish out that disc. And you are going to dish out the whole fucking disc. Mm, probably not that evenly, but you know, I mean, it depends where you clamp on and all the rest of it. But anyway, um, so yeah, you know, you start off at 30 miles per hour and then you build up to your 60 within, you know, maybe a 50 or a 40 in there if you want. Blah, 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 blah. It's just basically letting the, the brakes bed in. Now, I've got a demo, so I'll just play the tape. Yeah, so what we're trying to do for this braking thing is, the best thing to do is for the initial stuff, for the first five, ten times, something like that, is go out into the city, and even if you live in the suburbs or something, or wherever, or if you live in a village or whatever, try and get yourself to the city. And just use, like I say, just use your back brake like that, just to slow you down. Ride as you do normally, the cars and all the rest of it will basically give you like a natural speed limit. You know what I mean? I'm not saying feather it or anything, I'll be fucking girly about it. Uh, you also spend a lot of time sat around doing fuck all. Because that's a good idea, isn't it? Just pull right in front of a fucking motorbike, you swat. That's sick. And people said, oh, you're on that fucking advanced stopping area. Hey, as soon as fucking cyclists start paying fucking counter road tax, they can have what fucking part of the road they want. Until then, they can fuck off. And there's my rant about that. Any road, yeah, you know, just your general stuff. <clears throat> just riding around. Here's a good one, this is a hill, so it's good just to give the brakes a bit of a poke. Like that, you know. And then you just get to sit around like this and look at all the fucking poon, if there is any. There's always poon, surely. Oh, a bit old poon. Of course, the weather's just all of a sudden starting to turn nice, so that means all the roadworks have to come out, obviously. Why wouldn't you do that? But, um, 
Oh look, we're on a thousand miles, a thousand seven miles, that's that tree vortex shit. And I wanted to get to a thousand before I did it, just in case people start whinging. Oh I call the fucking posh side doors. Fuck me. Oh he's well prepared, isn't he? Tourists. Orange backpacks. Tourists. I don't know what it is with orange backpacks and tourists, but there's a thing. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take this back out to, um, oh shit, we're going to take this back out to uh, bigger roads, we'll go a bit out into the um, the surrounding villages and uh, put a bit more load on these brakes. But like I say, by the time you worm yourself through the city, you should have just pretty much about done. Right then, so now we're out with the... Uh, some of the posh twat and all the rest of it, some of the bit more arterial roads, we can, uh, you know, speed it up a bit, check that there's no fucker behind it, which there is, obviously, always is. There's going to be some fucker turning, there always is some fucker to ruin my day. You know, we're getting up to the 40s and all the rest of it. Uh, again, you know, just start dabbing on your brakes, just make sure that there's no fucker behind you, that's generally, it's, sometimes it's hard to do. And I never flow through this road, and you watch, as this demo, we're going to end up flowing through <laughs> this fucking road. Jesus Christ. It's like I'm all, I'm for once I'm actually waiting for some red lights. No, it's having none of it, look, you see, it's just going to carry on going. You fucking dive out, you cunt, I swear to God. So, yeah, now we're out in the sticks. Or the arterial roads of the city on our way back out. Yeah, you see there, just dab on a bit of brakes. We're, we're just about 40 there. Just jam on the back a bit. Not too aggressively, but not too girly. Come on. I hate the roads, the way these roads are laid out. Speed limits are no targets, they fucking are, mate. Here we go. Yeah, so you see, we're doing about 40, what's that, 44 or something like that, a slam on there. Speed up a bit, get right up his arse. Slow down a bit, that's the one. You see, we're just putting the brakes on and off and on and off. make sure this cunt behind us doesn't fucking nut butters. It's always wet there, there must be some kind of irrigation or something or something not. I know there's that ditch but it always comes onto the road. Always wet there. Give it a bit of dab on the brakes. Get up behind these fuckers. This is what I was looking for. This fucking bus, you see. This is it. Then you do this five, ten times, just cycle it a bit, you know what I mean? From then kind of speeds. And then what we'll do is we'll move on to the next bit. Right then, so we're getting bit onto the uh onto the bigger roads, country lanes. Get to these higher speeds. Make sure there's no fucker behind me. And then just get on the brakes, uh, cut your speed by about 20 miles an hour, something like that. 
it's not the speed reduction that you're going for it is the um, rotational uh, speed of the disc that you're after see the slam on a bit there we go make sure the roads aren't twitching they've got fucking lorry ruts in because that'll sort your life out hills are another good one up and down just carefully 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 just reduce your speed with them it's not exactly how massively you clamp on you don't have to do like emergency stops or skids everywhere the rotational speed of the disc will increase with your road speed so it's all about that again slam on a bit nothing crazy like i said i'm not lunging forward or anything or sliding off the back just check that there's no fucker behind you there's someone behind me now and obviously if you see a deer or anything you're gonna uh like you see we're slowing down to 30. try not to use engine braking too much because that's defeating the object You know, take our edge off our speed. Crazy village poon. They're always fucking crazy. Yeah, always. So that's that, and uh, back to the studio. <laughs> so the question is, um, what happens if you don't do? Fucking hell. I'm gonna go out and better. We're gonna get a job. Um, yeah, what happens if you don't follow this? What happens if you don't follow these guidelines? What happens if you just go out? Because every time I say do this, do this, do this, people always say, yeah, but Matt, what happens if you don't? Or I didn't bother, or is it dangerous, or what would happen? Which is great, you know. So at the <laughs> in the name of science, <laughs> I basically went like about a battle hell. I'm not gonna tell you how fast, fast. Um, went like a bat of hell and slammed on like a motherfucker until the back started juddering and I did this a couple of times um, after I'd done this kind of braking procedure whatever which was uh, two weeks ago so uh, and this is the result so I'll put the picture up now <laughs> it's still like that now um, it'll slow the, the coloration will be uh, worn off and all the rest of it but what you can see is you can see that there's these colours of the disc so anything that's like a light straw, so you see around the main, uh, the inner ring where you actually bolt it together, anything that's like a light straw colour is bet is about 230 degrees, right? So that's how hot that section of the disc got. So that region of the disc base has got up to 230. Anything that's like, uh, you can see on there we have like a reddish, um, if you look at the calipers, the backing plates, you can actually see they're like a reddish, um, uh, purple if you want to call it that that's between 260 and 270 degrees C so that's pretty bloody hot and we'll get back to that in a second the blue of the disc that you can see let's choose I should have chosen blue for that shouldn't I like an idiot um, the blue section of the disc is around about um, am I in the, yeah, I'm in the way aren't I? is about 302 now these temperatures are not pr that precise so 300 degrees so that disc surface and we can't obviously cut the disc in half which is a shame because by doing it we'd have to call process what a tangent forget it the fact is you can see that that surface of that disc got up to about 300 degrees celsius now this is an excellent example of my um moanings and whingings on about copper grease if you look at that disc and you look at the back of them pads so what basically what you have is you have your pad material like this and then you have your backers here if you can see that that backer there that has gone purpley red so that's about 270 degrees c that's how hot that thing has got if you look at um the video i'll put the clip up now blow a torch so we all know how steel works and if you heat steel to a certain temperature this is stainless steel if you heat steel to a certain temperature you get um, discoloration of the steel um, which basically gives you a good indication of what temperature it is 
Right then. Poppy Davros, the police have come to visit me. I didn't know she was 16, I swear to God. Anyway, Rod, what we're going to do is we're going to heat the back of it and we're going to see what happens. We're not getting that hot because the steel isn't turning yellow. And as you can see, We are starting to run, and that is the issue. So a little dab will do you. It, oh, it melts at 1800 degrees, matter whatever the fucking hell these Muppets were saying. It's smoking like a dickhead, which generally when you use your brake pads for the first time you'll think, oh that smoking's just the pad seating. No, it's probably this shit frying off the back. Obviously a little dab will do you, there's a lot less to actually heat up and run, but you can see it's starting to run anyway regardless. So all these people said that it doesn't burn or whatever, I'm not talking about the actual, and you can see, now we're getting to yellow. So this is well before, you can start to see it's going straw yellow there in the middle. The actual steel, we're not looking at this stuff, we're looking at the steel in between the two. So if I heat up a section of steel at the top here, you'll see it starts to go straw yellow. Which gives you a good indication of the temperature. So we're not getting stupid, stupid hot. When we basically got that piece of stainless steel, heated that up and put copper grease on it, you could see that the colour of the steel didn't even change and the copper grease started to drip and run like an idiot. Can the back of these pads get that hot? Yes, they can. If you put copper grease all over the back of that, that copper grease would have run onto your calipers and it can flick everywhere onto your disc and just turn to shit. So it's not nonsense. You know what I mean? I wanted to do a twofold thing of what happens when you do a braking procedure wrong, <laughs> overheating your discs and your pads. Because it's my rear, I'm not that too bothered because, you know, I'm like, I hardly use my rear. So, because the back of the pad's got that hot, obviously that's hot enough to make this copper grease run. All these dickheads who say stuff like, oh, it's 1,200 degrees, that's the copper in these, not the fucking grease, the actual um, carrying material. So, that's what they look like <laughs> if you've overcooked them, if you've done it wrong. Um, and, like I say, that's a good example of how hot these things got and what could happen if you put copper grease on the back of them. So this is a testament to um, EBC, you know, that disc, like I say, that disc is perfectly fine. I got a flat edge on it and just checked it. I could get my dial test indicator out. The thing is as straight as fuck. The brake pads, are, look, they look fine. We could actually take the brake pads off and actually have a look at the actual surfaces, see what they look like, but there's no real scoring in the disc or anything shit like that. Uh, and it's my back brake, so... Pff. Who cares? <laughs> That's why I was, you know, ready to um, sacrifice, in a sense, then pads and all of it. But it's a testament to them. Um, this is why you have to be careful of the cheap, shitty discs you get off eBay and stuff like that. Um, I am not going to risk my neck uh, going quite fast and slamming on with a cheap disc if it shatters, cracks, explodes, or whatever, and you get a blowout or whatever could possibly happen. I just don't want that to happen because I'll probably die. Um, so yeah, stay away from cheap rotors, you know, yes these brake pads and discs are quite expensive, you don't need them that often, and, but this is the only thing that stops you dying. If you are going 60 mile an hour, and just traffic slowing down, if you didn't have not your brakes, good luck with your engine braking, you're going to fucking die. So remember, when you spend money on your braking system, be it rotors, pads, brake lines, brake fluid, whatever. Don't fucking cut costs. If you're going to cut costs in anything, cut costs on your fuel, oil, whatever. Tyres and brakes are absolutely everything. If your engine blows up and you're sat still, it won't even idle, it won't even start, then you ain't going to kill yourself. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.